Right guys, hope that, hope that, hope that. I'm uh, redoing this video because I brought a fancy camera in uh, so you all get a nice crisp view of this. And then I realised I'm looking in that little window on the side like this. And oh, what a waste of a video, I brought him a flipping fancy camera and yeah, I looked at that flipping window all the way through. So I'm going to try and look that lens in the middle. In fact, I'll get rid of that window and that might help me. Right, so this is what I've got special in. Absolutely special, I love these. Uh, don't know why, I can't tell you why I love them, just basically because that is the king, that is that is the king of all engines, is that. Uh, it's in a Manx Norton frame or a Manx Norton replica frame, it's not an original one, it's a copy of one. But it's not a bad copy. General things that tell you it's a Manx Norton is this big radius on back here. That's a Manx Norton frame. And also the road going frames have a gusset here where the race bike frames don't have that gusset there. So that, that tells you that it's a Manx Norton frame. Uh, so you've got the best of frames from like the 50s, 60s, and then like your best, best engine that you can throw in there. So yeah, I like it when I get these in. It'd be nice if I could actually work on an original one. Uh, this is basically what I've got. This, that's what an original one looks like. Uh, and these customers give me this. It's out of Bon Bonham's uh, calendar, which I think I've got at home still, 2019. And he's given me that. That's, that's basically what he wants. I uh, think they're known as black lightning pipes. So that would be on my list of bikes to do would be a black lightning. Big fat pipes they are. These, these little ports here, they're only inch and five eighths, so the, the stubs that go in them are the same size as the Norton. But then what do you do then? You step them up into massive pipes, bring them down, sweep them down like that. And basically that's a sprint bike. It's, they use them for doing land speed records and stuff. So that it's running it right at the top end, which is why you put big, big bore pipes on it. Uh, this one, we're changing it a little bit. He's gonna run this on road, obviously, as a cafe racer. So, he turned up and he had a load of different dimensions for the pipes, like if you do them in inch and five eighths, which would probably be the standard size. You'd normally run them down into a two into one, so you have that pipe runs down here, that pipe joins into it. And then normally, if you're building a bike like this, you're building a, you just stick a gold star silencer on the back end there, but if this guy wants some sawn off shotgun style like this, just full board, alt noise out of there, maybe stick some baffles in. Uh, so. Yeah, he turned up, he had some sizes, inch and five eighths, they should be 60 inches long. The fatter they get, the shorter they get. And basically, he said if you put the full bore pipes on, then, yeah, it's just, it's not going to run nice. It run nice on smaller pipes. If you're running it around town, if you want it to just to run right, you're better off with the smaller pipes and it'll just give you a bit more bottom end. So we've gone somewhere in the middle, we're going to do inch and three quarters, which is just one size up from that. The, the big bore pipes like these are two inch. The size down from that would be inch and seven eighths. Size down from that inch and three quarters. Then inch and five eighths would fit in there. Uh, you could probably put an inch and a half. The, the standard pipe might actually be an inch and a half. So we've gone, they've gone for the middle set and they want to be like this. So like, like that picture again. Well, that, that's what we're aiming for. That's what they should look like. Uh, but the problem being that there is the standard frame. Standard frame, standard engine. This is Vincent engine in a Norton frame, so it's what they call a Norvin. Uh, and I've got now made my challenge is to make these pipes fit that engine like they do in that photograph, but then make the pipes also fit the frame. So you just have to do a bit of fudging between the engine and the frame, which is just all this bit down here at the bottom. You just have to get that bit about right, get it under the peg, get it on a standard bike, it won't have this bottom rail there, so you could just flick it right all underneath and get it right out of the way of the pegs. Looking at that, the pegs would be the pegs would be out of the way anyway. They'd be back here somewhere, so there'd be no problem at all with doing that bike. But yeah, with this one, it's just trying to make it look like that when it's not that. So, my first bit, I've been sat down here on a, on a wooden board on the floor, uh, and I've just been messing about with these. And these I use, it's just flexios. I use this like plasticine just to mould a pie, and it lets me bend it forward, backwards, just to get me in right place. And that's going to be that pipe there. So that's that's going to go in this cutout there on gearbox, just under peg. I've got no brake pedals to work off and no kickstart to work off, so to get around kickstart is just get it all in. Get it in as tight as there as I can. And then brake pedals, same thing, I'm gonna get them in as tight as I can there, and he'll just, if, he, if they don't clear, he'll have to put like a, what they call a dog leg lever on, so the lever will have to come out a little bit just to, so it slips over the top of pipes. So I've got that on there. That, that's going to be my first bend. 
which you can't really tell off that photograph because it's not giving you enough information. But what I'm what I'm aiming for here on this now, so this is this is my artistic license. I've got to try and make it look right. So this is a general idea. What I'm aiming for is just to get this HRD badge smack bang in the middle. If you can get that, so this pipe frames that badge in the middle, that's going to look right. And then this will be my bottom pipe. This one's a bit more tricky because I've got the frame to contend with there. And then I've got these engine bolts here that are being a bit of a pain. And that should sit like that. Now they're not quite going together right because that one wants, the front pipe wants to flick under the gearbox. That one's going to sit in front of the gearbox. So they're not quite right, but I'm nearly there. I've also got to decide whether I go underneath this, whatever that is, it looks like a starter motor or something. And it's not going to be a starter end there, it might be an alternator or like a dynamo flipping magneto thing. Uh, whether I go over that, it'd be nice if I could just hook it in underneath there, but then it's obviously it's on the same line as that top pipe. So it might be a case of, I think I'm going to try and follow this curve on here. Follow that round and hook it in. So that, that's part of the artistic license. So that that won't be on a normal frame, so you won't have to follow that. But because it's here on that frame, it's just a little little something to work towards. So that that is doing that. I could do with bending it a little bit more forward and backwards a bit. Just having a play with it. That's same with that one. Then once I've got that, they're nearly there, I think. I don't know what to do with that one. Once I've done that, once I've got these two going, uh, next plan then is to do something like, get rid of that one, is to copy. So this would be my front pipe, is then to try and copy that with a piece of wire. Like, ugh, like that. Copy that with a piece of wire, and then use this piece of wire to sand then that. So I've got a couple of pet pipes over there that are full of sand. And I'll do put them in my vice, get blowtorch out, and just start off, start putting that bend in. Use this pattern on the top of it. And if I copy this wire pattern right, then I'll end up with this underneath, but made in solid tube. So that's my plan. So not tomorrow, because it's my birthday tomorrow. Uh, I'm having a day off. Day after, I'm gonna just come in, set camera up, blast through two of these, get these all proper bent up. Should only take me a, should take me a day. So it take me half a day to do this, half a day fiddling, just working out the patterns, and then probably a day to bend them, to bend both of them, and then another day, me yeah, half a day to a full day. It'd be half a day, but it might as to just write the full day off, fitting them, getting them all fit and nice, and then the guys give me a little bracket here as well. I've got a weld a little triangle bracket on the back corner there, and that's where I'll put the tab down onto it to fasten. Fasten the two pipes together there. I think he's, he's picked up on a little bracket here on photograph. There's a little tie bracket which will go between the two pipes. So that's actually one thing I need to think about when I'm when I'm bending these on. So when I'm making these patterns here. He has he has said that he wanted a bracket there, so if I can make my life a bit easier. I need to put a bracket between the two here, so I need to just think while I'm bending these, try and find a nice place to put a bracket there, and if I can like tighten up that gap maybe, that might make it a little bit easier to put the bracket on, but then it might wreck the line. So I'll just have to have a play with that and have a think of how I'm going to get there in the end. That's basically what these are doing, these are giving me a bit of an idea of what the end result will look like before I even start it. So yeah, so that is it, that's, that's the bike, that's, that's the bike, that's the pipes, that's the engine. Um, probably going to have a switch camera off now. Go and get the pipes out, put them in the vise, make sure that the sand's all tapped down nice and tight. And, and then sit there and, my first plan, I think I'll just get this bottom pipe done first. So I'm just going to sit here for a while and just bend up the pipes. So like yeah, and I've just caps that that's I forgot about that bracket bit there and it's that stumped me a bit. What I could do with doing is trying to I'm probably gonna build up some blocks here. I'm gonna get some wooden blocks, get them all blocked out there. So I've got a level here that's just below that frame rail. And then when I'm jangling around with that, it's not trying to do this all the time. I can po possibly get it to sit there a little bit. Maybe get a bit of string tight up on top end. 
and then, then I can just tweak, keep tweaking that so I can get it bang on right. That bend, the hardest thing about these, the, the bend's not too bad. It's really hard to do that bend over there to get it to come out across the casing and then flick back in underneath here. That's hard to do in two inch. But this stuff, it's the same size as what I use for doing like the CCM pipes and stuff. So I'm fair familiar with bending this inch and three quarters. So that shouldn't be too bad to bend. That's the main one of the reasons we've gone with it. It gives a nice line, it shouldn't be too hard to bend it. But it's hard, well, the only hard thing is, is that, is, is this part of it. Is, Balancing these two pipes like that when they just want to go all over the shore. And like I can get that pipe in the right place. So I can fiddle about with that pipe on its own. I can get that looking nice. And then I can fiddle about with the pipe on its own. Get that one looking nice. But when I've been when I've got that one on there now, I have to try and remember where that one were. It's just like so then you put that one down, you pick this one up. You ever think, right, where did that go? Right, that went across there, it went underneath there. What would the other one look like? What that? Right, so that's on. I know that one goes underneath there, but it's really hard to check both of them at the same time. And that bit same, well, when you actually bend the pipes out of tube, it's the same thing. It's really hard to get them on there. But we have said, this is, this is light, it's just empty casings that. So I might, at some point, end up lying that down on its side, which will then make it a bit easier because I'm not fighting with gravity. If I can just get some blocks of wood behind it, drop it down on the floor, even this big wooden board that I'm sat on. You can put that down on the floor there. Just drop it down on its side. Start laying the pipes on the top of it when they just, they'll stay where they are then. Which might be an idea. Uh, I'll have to check how heavy it is first. And like I say, it's, it's not mega heavy, but it's still going to be a bit of a backbreaker to lift that up and, and throw it on its side. So right, I'll do that now uh, and we'll, we'll get cracking on. Right guys, uh, set that up there because I've just been having a bit of a play and it does make it make semi good viewing i don't know how much you'll be able to see if i get in the way so this this is working this is a better way of doing it because i can just do that and it, it drops and it stays uh, my plan is is because when you're sand bending you know generally have that bit there clumped in vice and on these when, when the pipe's finished it'll sit outside here on the outside of the nut which works in my favor because i'll chop that bit off the clamped bit because when i clamp it it mangles it all up so my plan is, is to get the pipe to fit right inside the nut and then I should be using that then just to just to help shape this so as, like I said in that last video I do want that to come like as far around there as I can so I get a nice big sweep out of it get that HRD badge smack bang in the middle and then get this to fit I want it to fit straight at the bottom I want it to touch that all the way because if I can get it just to skim that so it follows the contour of this perfectly what I do then once I've fitted it is I just go in and put like a, put a dent in the top there just to get it to, to clear over that and then maybe put a dent up there where it needs to go around that rocker cover that tappet cover I should say so like that, that's it once it keeps flicking down there and I'll just move that a bit more I don't know whether just to put a wiggle in back end of that. Just to get it right underneath that peg. That could be the one. Now that, that, that little bend I've just put it back of there fits really well up on here. But then it might be a bit too much for me to, to gauge when I'm, when I'm sand bending. I might not be able to copy that. Sometimes you, you put these, you put the little bits in, and they're the hardest bit to copy at the bits where you it's just a slight bend you can barely see them and especially when i'm copying it off a piece of wire but if i can get this pattern as good as i can get the pattern then the overall pipe when i finish with it should be about right that starts looking fair spot on so now I've, I've messed about with this i've slackened that bend out a lord because what i want to do with that now is just to get that to follow i want it like i said i want it to follow that for as long as possible and there's a bit of a gap behind it, so I might actually just be able to skim it along, but then there's this, this bit of gearbox here sticks out. So maybe possibly drop that one down a little tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, that's, that's worked a bit better there. And then when I put that one in there, 
Right, that's almost working. I'll be able to show you this from top down in a minute and it should hopefully look a lot better. Let's just try and get that gap to tie That hugs that there, that hugs that like perfectly. It goes into the pot perfectly, hugs, hugs that first bit of corner. Maybe if I'd... Definitely want to bend a bit more there. Something here just to stop that from doing that. I've done that, I've overbent that then just to see, just to give me an idea of what it looked like if it were overbent. It didn't work out too bad. I need another bend there if I were going to do that. I don't like, I don't like that because it's got too much of a straight ear, I think. Like bend, straight, bend. I want that to be one big swoop, but then it, it, won't, it won't actually go up into that gap, I don't think. almost perfect there. It's perfect. The, the, that, that one you can get it perfectly to follow up frame and to follow that casing around there and for that gap there to be minimal when it's sat on its own and then so that they look right on its own but they don't marry up together them two pipes whereas that pipe on the top looks perfect when it's sat on its own as well. So now it's a case of yeah, trying to join them two gaps together. And I don't know whether to run that up like that. I could get that a little bit closer up that way and leave that pipe. I don't know whether to leave that pipe like it is and get that pipe to match in with it. Or whether I put this in its perfect place, which is down there, and drop that pipe down lower to meet it like that. Which might be the case. They're both above the bottom rail, so they're not in a bad place that way. Yeah, don't like don't like how straight that that front bend is. Uh, I'd have to show you around here. I'll oh, get rid of that strap again. So what I'm not liking there is I'm not liking that bit of straight from here. So I was trying to tighten up that gap. Like that 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 bend coming out of there is nice because it's almost one continuous. But I've got rid of the lump out at the top. It's nice down here. Fits nice under the peg. Follows that bottom rail. So if I got rid of this one. That's that's an that's a good pipe for that for the engine in that frame. It's a good pipe there. Uh, tons of room underneath it. But then, like I say, then they put this pipe on, and it just doesn't sit quite right. I said they need to bring that one down a bit to to marry up with that one. To marry, bring the top pipe down to marry up with the bottom one. Bring the bottom one up a little tiny bit to marry up with the top one. So it's just instead of if I bring that one, if I bring the top pipe down to meet the bottom one, it won't look right. And if I bring the bottom one up to meet the top one, it won't look right. So it's a case now we're just trying to bring them both in, I think, and trying to make that arc there into one. So that needs swooping still. So it's almost just get rid of that bend there and make that into one big bend. But then it also still needs to carry on 
been a nice flick. Let's see what, what I was trying to do before was trying to get it to come down and follow that that engine casing. But then you see that engine plate there at the bottom, that curve on that. But then that gap there were too big, and it just didn't look quite right. So there's quite that's that's the problem with making pipes is there's quite a lot of play in here just to get a perfect looking set of pipes. That set I've just done the, there, this one, that's a perfectly set of good set of pipes. The ones that I put on the video in the last part of the video, perfect set of pipes. But there's somewhere in between where they're even better. And I'm always aiming for that even better. Like a perfect, perfect set of pipes. Just because like I say, I'm gonna take a photograph of it and if I take a photograph of it, I want it to be the best photograph I can take. Or and that means I want the pipes to be the best set of pipes that I can make, so I'm just going to play about with them for a bit more and then see what they look like after that. Right guys, uh, back in workshop. Uh, we're looking at screen again, I need to get rid of that. Uh, what I forgot to say, I'm going to start again. Hi guys, right, back in workshop. It's freezing cold outside, it snowed last night. Uh, it looked a bit wild when we were looking through the window, but I left it, I just wait an hour or two, wait for everyone else to smush it all up and then come into work. So it weren't too bad. Got van out, easy peasy. Uh, you can never get out back street low and I've got a guy picking up a bike tomorrow. And it's like, it's ankle deep outside, so not a chance we get a van down here, but we could always push it out, can't we? So I've told him if he wants to come, just come, leave van up on top road and we'll push bike up to the top. So I'm gonna get Blowtorch out today because it's flipping freezing. Uh, I've messed about, I've done a couple of hours already, just messed about, double checked all them patterns that were on bike, that flexios. Uh, I might have made them a bit more complicated than I needed to be, so if you were going to do it easy, you just do one, one swoop, and that'd be an easy way to bend it, but it won't look perfect on bikes, so I put all these little tiny bends in all the way down, and that's made it really hard to copy. So when I've been bending my bit of wire, like, well, I mean, it's a little bend there, a little bend there, a little bend there. And when I come round to doing it, I might not even be able to put them little bends in because you might not be able to see them. I like it if I bend it with, with blowtorch, I might only be able to do a big bend. So some of them, you have to just iron them out and get them as close as you can. And then the rest of it, do it with, do it with an hammer on the back. So just like put some dints in it so it clears the casings and stuff like that. So let's spin camera around now. This is basically what I've got. That's me. Let's see if it'll zoom in. Not zoom in, but focus up. That there, that's me piping bike, ready to go. These are me, me flexi patterns there on bike. So that's what I'm going to try and recurate is that. Uh, and then I've got batteries running low, so I might not even be able to show you this uh, this sand bending bit. But then I've got my wire patterns here. So they're copies of the pipes that are on the bike. And to start off with, I'm going to bend that one because it's easier. That's just one big swoop with a bit of a kick on back end of it. That'll give me a bit of practice, just warm me back up again, because I do this like once a week, not once a day. So just get me back into fl into flow again. And then I'll do that top part there, which is a bit harder. Uh, I've got a battery on charge over here and it's knackered, I think. Just keeps on staying on orange. Uh, so I might have to take that out, stick this battery in that I've got here. And what I'll do, I'll probably bend that first pipe while I'm waiting for the battery to charge up. Put you back onto my face. Yeah, I will. I'll bend that first pipe, the lower pipe, while I'm waiting for the battery to charge up. And then once I'm swinging, I know what I'm doing. I'll get the camera out, we'll set it up, and I'll try and film a bit of the second pipe uh, and show you checking me, show you me checking them on the bike kind of thing. So. Yeah, we'll do that. I work holding this camera at arm's length, you know. It's all a bit like flipping shaky because it's everything. Uh, but yeah, I'll do that. I'll get it on charge now because then it might charge you up a bit quicker and I'll get some eating to workshop. Right, have a good one. Right, guys, I don't know how much you're going to be able to see of this. So what I'll do is I'll just get it set up. And I'll, I'll try and move, move camera about a bit. I might prop it up there on the table so you get a bit of a view over the top. Basically, it's hard to get it all in because these pipes here, you want some 50 inches long, so I've cut them at 60. And then once I've finished with it, I'll do the calculations to work them out. So what I'll chop, probably chop like three off the top and seven off the back, kind of thing, to make sure that they are 50. It's the best way of working it out perfectly, is to start with, I've, I know that that bit there in the middle is about 50 inches. And then once I've bent it, yeah, if I just chop, 
I know it's 60, if I chop 3 off that end and 7 off that end, it is 50 in it, so that's the best way of doing a doing a water, whatever you call that. It's a, what is that? <laughs> oh, a tuned length, that's the one, tuned length. Tune length. These they, they, like everyone wangs on about a tune length. Like oh it needs to be a tune length, but nobody knows what the tune is, do they? It is basically it's very similar to tuning an instrument and Yeah, to get a G, you need, you need to tune it so you get a G kind of thing. But I would have thought that you, say if, I don't know nothing about instruments, but say if you've got a guitar and the bodies are all slightly different, you can't just go one, two, three, four turns at the top, bing it, and it's a G, and then do exactly the same one, two, three, four on the next guitar, bing, it's a G. It needs... That'll get you somewhere close, won't it? 50 inches will be somewhere close. That'll be like your four turns on the string. But then the difference in wood and the difference ways like constructing that guitar, it might need four and a quarter turns or it might need three and three quarter turns to get a G. And then you, you, you're just tweaking it backwards and forwards, aren't you, till you've got a, a perfect G. I would have thought, I don't know nothing about tuning instruments or instruments or music, but it's generally that, so that these need to be tuned to work with that engine down there, and it depends on what engine that is and how refined it is, say, how well it's been machined out, all that kind of stuff, what size bore it is and how accurate that bore is and what size the inlets are and how big the inlets are and how big the exits are and all that kind of stuff. The timing, cams, there's a lot of stuff. Air pressure is a big one, isn't it? If you've got air pressure, different air pressures. So if you're up at the top of a mountain, you know, if you're bottom, down at sea level, that's a different tune because that all plays in how thick your air is, what fuel you put in, it'll make a difference. And then you're talking like 50 or 50 and a quarter or 49 and three quarters kind of thing. So it's just a rough guide, that. It's a rough guide from a book that's probably written in the 60s or something like that, 60s, 70s, about to tune that and what lengths. But then that'll be better. It'll be better than a 50s or a 60s one, or you'd hope it would be. So, yeah, God knows. Like, a bit like, yeah, more in instruments now are probably better. They're probably more refined as a musical instrument because you, you can work a lot of this stuff out on the computer, can't you? <laughs> You're not just guessing, basically. And that's a lot, sometimes, like if you make making a race engine now, there's a lot less guessing in it. You can run them up on dynos and all that kind of stuff, and you can get these more accurate because you can measure that more accurate because the measuring equipment's a lot more accurate in it. So then you can get this pipe length more accurate. If you imagine like MotoGP, they'll be have that dial within an inch that length. Whereas I would have thought this guy and that engine will be more like half a foot, like six inches, six inches here or there. It'll probably give you very similar results. You could probably chop it back three inches and it'll run the same as putting three inches on. That happens a lot in racing, like you can you, they chop them back, they keep chopping them back, chopping them back, chopping them back, and it goes worse. And then you keep putting them on, putting it on, putting it on, and it goes worse. Or the other way around, you chop it back, it goes better, and you put it on, it goes better. And yeah, who knows? And then it all depends on like I say, air pressures, gear ratios. Whether you, where you want the power to be, whether you want it to be at the bottom end, the top end. Yeah, tune length is just a, <laughs> it's just a length. Right, I'm going to get me, get me pattern out. It's not rambling on, let's get a pattern out. That's going to be my pattern. These make a difference whether you put these on the top side of the pipe or on the bottom side of the pipe. I also need to turn that around because I want that weld on the back. Makes little difference if the welds on the front or on the back. It just, when it comes to polishing it, come on. Wrong way that way, it? Comes to polish it, sometimes that, that weld will show up. You'll just see it as a mark on the pipe, so it's a lot better if you just put it on back. So I'm going to bend away from you. <coughs> I'm going to bend away from you. We'll see how we get on. A lot of the times, if I'm, if I'm doing a bend, a straight, a bend, a straight, I'll mark it on. Bend, straight, bend, but with this it's, it's a case of getting myself from there 
round to like, I just do it one big sweep of an arc and then try and get myself roughly lined up with back at bench there, which is looking about right. And I'm gonna have to do a bit of, bit of downing, I think. It's got a slight kick in it at the top, so I don't know if it's, I think I might start by going down. I might just go down all the way. No, I'll start by going down and then I'll probably rotate the pipe round so that the bend is going into that. But yeah, there's not there's just just start bending it, I think. Start putting some same as what I wanted about before, just put some bend in it. Get a bit of shape in it. Right gang, uh, back, back, I've bent a pipe. Uh, I've been outside, cleared some snow as well, just cause it would do me tits in. Uh, I wanted to go and get some water. I don't have no water in the building, so I borrowed neighbor's hose pipe outside. And I was sick of getting my boots wet, so I just thought I'd dig some of that up. Uh, it'll also help when a customer comes tomorrow to pick his bike up. Uh, yeah, that done, had a brew. Uh, but I had, I bent this pipe down here on the floor and it's ready to check. I've checked it, it's, I mean, it looks good, so I've left it. I've bent it, checked it, left it. It wants another check before I fit it. But basically, all you do, I put the basic shape in, uh, and then it's ready to go in it. I, you see, it's there, it's it's 90%, 95% there. Uh, it might just go straight on, but yeah, before I do that, check it. So what I'm gonna do now is bend the next pipe. I've got a full battery, might last like 10 minutes or something, because these batteries are old, I think. Uh, I'll film myself doing the next part, which is the harder part. That part went all right, it's nice and curvy. I think it's gonna look good when it's on. A uh, bit different from a normal one. A normal one would just be one swoop, just bent on one former. This has got like a bit of up and down in it, up and down in it, which should make it look nice when it's on. So if I flip camera around, I'll show you. That's what we've got, that part down there. And this is what I mean why it goes up and down, up and down a little bit. You can see how it, it flicks up does a bend and then it kind of straightens itself back out on end there. So there's a bend there on end, big bend, another bend there to straighten it back out again. And from this view one, should look like one curve, which it pretty much does, doesn't it? It's like that's that's what it would look like if you were gonna bend one on a former. It'd just be one, 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 just one continuous curve and it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have that waggle in it. That waggle you can only put in by sand bending it or cutting and turning and doing a load of shite like that. So I think that should fit. It's, it's too heavy for me to hold the camera and pick it up and try it on. And at the moment, it's about that much too long on end. So I can't actually try it. When I try it on, it, it runs below bike. So my next one is to do that one. Let's, we'll copy that, put 90% put of the shape in again. And then what my final tweaks will be, I might like tweak that a bit to get it to fit, might tweak the top a little bit to get it to fit, but basically just get the get the general shaping uh, and then do some fine adjustment afterwards. So what I'll do is get me, my blow torch is out there, vice is there, next pipe's there somewhere, so it's not focusing again that, yeah next pipe's there. I'll get that, put it in vice, get blow torch out, set camera up on tripod there, Get you a good view on. Uh, maybe make a nice video. The, the the bending of this pipe, I have recorded it on my phone, so I might be able to put that in and, in this bit of the, you know, in the middle, portrait-wise. So yeah, I'll do that. Hold on, mate. Let's let's flip around. Let's look at my face again. Right, that's it. Yeah. So I'll do that. I don't even know what I'm on about these days. Uh, <laughs> it'd just be a case of that. Yeah, just whip it out. Get it on the bike try it, tweak it, it's all a bit, you just don't know until until it's done kind of thing, it's just all a bit up in the air, nobody knows what that's going to come out like, you're just doing all your best guess you can do, I've got my wire patterns, so that there is my wire pattern, that's going to get me, that's going to, that's me 95% there is copying that, and then the last 5% is a bit of between this, between the bike, copy, make sure it looks similar to me flexi pattern, 
uh, I say, because the bike's lying down on its back there, over there, uh, should be able to try them on and get them somewhere near. There, there are, there are, they are hard work, these ones, just because cause there's a lot of guessing in it. There's a lot of guessing in it, and I want them to be spot on, because it's one of them bikes where... I mean, it's one of them bikes, it's a, it's a high-value bike kind of thing, so you want the pipes to be high-value as well. I could just whip them out, to the, I could have just bent them, but then they'd be not much different from the ones that you can buy from like Armors or whatever, they'd just be standard pipes. When the bike's that special, they need to have a special set, so I'm going to go that extra mile. So I'll get camera set up and we'll have a go. It wants a push down there, and then I might twist it back again. Yeah, definitely wants a lot more. It wants a lot more. It wants a lot more bend putting in it, basically. Uh, it's... Well, if I did that, I mean, I don't know whether to do that with it. Just drop it back down straight. Possibly could. This is where you start getting a bit lost. Chalk. This is going to be. I'm going to put this downward set. There's a downward section in it there, and it's keep my eye on that. And then it's a bit of a. It's near enough a full sweep round. So that I want some on the top, just to bring that drop that back down flat, and then I can curve it. And I better make sure that that's nice and tight. Right guys, I've uh, I've been busy, been busy this morning, uh, building, building, bending, bending a rail for uh, a vintage, I guess it were like 1920s, 1920s elk, a Lincoln elk, I had to bend the bottom rail on it, where engine sits in the middle, nice little thing, what rounds of black and burn, uh, but I've just had a look at these Vincent Northern pipes, and they just needed a couple of tweaks, so I tweaked them without setting camera up, because the battery's naff, Battery's broke on it, I think. So I'll show you what I've done. I'll put them on the bike. What I've been doing is, oh, it's hard work with this camera again. <laughs> Matt steamed it all up as well. Uh, what I've done is, I've sandbent them, copying off that flexi holes, and then I've copied off, copied the flexi holes using a piece of wire. So these are my little wire templates that I've been using. But then, because when you bend it, the bends come out slightly different from the wire template, I have now just double checked that by rebending my wire template so that it follows the pipe. So that's the pipe I've got because I can't get the pipe onto the bike. I've done that with it, I've rebent the wire slightly. And now, when I put the wire on here, that fits nicely, I think. So that should follow that. that, that fits on there when the ends are trimmed. 
and then that's my another piece of wire there and that fits nicely that's been copied off this pipe so I think I'm nearly at the stage now where I just empty the sand out of them but that's the most scariest bit so yeah that's the hard bit I need to empty the sand out because then I can trim the ends down they basically they both want this much taking off either end and then I can get them to fit on the bike but until I've took that much off the end I can't get them anywhere near the bike uh, so it's a bit hard work I've got these I can compare with the flexios so if you look at them they both look like similar pipes and then if you look at them they're both similar pipes so everything's saying that they should fit but the, yeah this is the scary moment now so I might just go with it to be honest with you. I might go with it because this, the only bit that's not going to fit is like down here where it wiggles and that's going to go over gearbox. There, just a little wiggle to go over gearbox. So then it comes back in and it touches the frame rail there. That's the bit that I'm unsure about, that little, like that going in there. But if it don't fit, I could probably knock a bit out of it with an hammer just to make it so it does fit. So the bits where it touches along there, I can just tap them out with an hammer. Uh, if all goes wrong I'll just have to rebend them and then I'll use that as a pattern to rebend it if you get me so yeah that's my next bit is to empty it sand out and give it a go uh, I probably won't film that I'll just I'll empty it sand out and then I'll update you 